I'm reading going live. The Hangout on Air is live. That's what it says. Woohoo! And how's everybody today? This is uh, Matt Stevens. I'm Matt Stevens in Aline UAE. And this is the uh, 20th of March, 2016. And we're here with some very good friends, very old friends. Some of them younger than others, but many of them old. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anyway, there's Michael Coghlan. He's joined us from Adelaide, Australia. And Elizabeth Ann has joined us from uh, Grenoble in France. And Jennifer Vachure has joined us. And she's she, we were going to be joined by uh, Anna Maria Menezes, but uh, she couldn't make it. But this is actually, a, she's going to talk to us tonight from Buenos Aires about a uh, something called uh, Hello There, a project that they've been working on. And we'll probably, hopefully, talk about other things as well, other things that Jennifer's been doing. Jennifer is quite a, a powerhouse in uh, teacher training and technology in Argentina. She seems to have constant uh, gigs, I should say, things to do. We'll get her, we'll, we'll probe her and get her to tell her, tell us <coughs> more about them. So, Jennifer, how are you today? Fine. Thank you very much, Vance, and everybody in the room for being here today. Thank you for your warm introduction. I'm with a terrible cold today, but I'm still here with all of you. And I'm so sorry Ana Maria can't join us today. Would you like to switch your webcam on for a moment, and then we'll come back to the slide okay. presentation. Uh, that we'll, at least we can see you in the... Uh, for a second. OK. Uh -huh. Anything can happen in these Hangouts. You know, we, everything was working fine, and then we asked Let's Jennifer see. to do something unusual, and then... <laughs> and now? Can you see me? We can see your screen. I can see me on the screen, so you seem to be sharing... Uh... <coughs> yeah, because maybe if I'm sharing the screen... No. What, 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 what? There it is. No? My camera is on. Okay. I still see a screen share. Have you unshared your screen? Yep. You have to click on the green thing to unshare your screen. If that doesn't work, well, maybe let me just never mind. Screen it, and then I start sharing it again. Ah, uh, now you're back to your avatar. Okay, and your webcam is. Now it's on. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least no, okay. That's on my screen. Maybe it's a bandwidth <laughs> thing. Maybe you you said you're having rundown bandwidth. Well, at least we saw your picture. Your picture was there. <laughs> there I am. Now the yeah. Yeah. There you are. Your oh. camera came on. There's your camera. Okay. Hi, Jenny. Okay. This is me. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> so nice let's see if I you. can if I can share it. Okay. There's Michael. Nice to see you, Michael. If you, by the way, uh, I've clicked Jen in for the recording. Elizabeth Ann reminded me to do a moment ago. Uh, but if you want to see Jennifer's slides, you might have to click on her icon. So she's going to show a presentation here. Uh, can you we're see my chatting. I can, we can see your slides. It's on full screen, yes. Okay, perfect. There, we have no viewers at the moment, so we're not talking to anybody in the streamed audience, but um, okay. for Michael and Elizabeth Ann, we're, we're at, um, my, oh yes, uh, you've got the chatwing.com, Vance, did you put the link in there, thank you very much, okay, so we're chatting at uh, chatwing.com slash Vance Steve, and we're doing that just in case anybody shows up in the stream. Okay, great. So, so the idea today was to share a project that we implemented two years ago with Ana Maria, and the name of the project was Pen Pulse Go Digital. The idea was to have 18 uh, Brazilian students to pair up with students from another country, mainly for them to communicate using English. And uh, when Ana Maria, she posted um, this message on Facebook, I read it, and I thought that it was really interesting for us to start this international project especially because at that time the World Cup was approaching and uh, you know that in Argentina and Brazil there are huge rivals for those of you that have visited these continents you know how this is and uh, our dream was really for our students to share their daily lives through 
different online spaces. So the main purpose was this, was to get them to get to know each other. At that moment, I was teaching language, um, a subject where my students, they had to write 450 word essay. So imagine when you enter a classroom with 25 teenagers and you tell them, okay, today you have to write an essay on um, peace, for example, and imagine that most of my students kept saying, oh, miss, today I'm not inspired, miss, please, I don't want to write so many words. So Ana Maria was facing a similar problem in Brazil, and that's why we thought, why don't we make them first meet each other, doing something similar that happens with the web, web heads, really, community, where you get to know somebody, you, st you start to contact this other person, there min a lot of interaction takes place, and then after a period of four weeks, our students had to write a composition on the other students. Okay, so really it was four weeks as you can see here, but it took longer because students got very motivated. So um, this is Ana Maria Menezes from Brazil. This is me, Jennifer Versor from Argentina. There's something really important that I would like to highlight is that there was no technology in my classroom in the moment that I implemented this project. All of this took place after school. This is important because Many times when teachers think that they need to innovate, they think that it's necessary to have all the technology available. And then as Maria's case, her students could use the mobile phones in the classroom. So there was a little bit of uh, technology in the class. So why did we plan this idea of creating pairs? Because this is what we wanted, we wanted students to communicate with each other. In some cases, as my class was bigger than Anna's Maria's class, what we had to do is to put them in trios as well. So most of this communication took place in Edmono. Now one of the main focus we wanted throughout the project was definitely engagement. Now engagement through the use of technology and through the use of English. And as we can read here in the slide, it says engagement with project is closely related to building connections with the people involved. After this project finished, most of our students told us that now they have a friend in Argentina or they have a friend in Brazil. So this is, was highly successful for us. Now the project itself had several different stages. The main objective, as I have been, to, I've been telling you, is that they had to write a report. And in this report, they had to write down what they had learned from the other boy or girl from Argentina or Brazil. So it was a very simple project. We used Edmodo as our main platform. And we divided them into groups. We had more than 20 groups. And then here's something that I really like to stress, is that throughout the project, we were not focusing on the use of English itself, but we were focusing on the real communication. In my case in particular, my students have always attended a bilingual school, but this was the first time where they were really able to use English outside of the classroom. Most of my students, some of them obviously traveled, but not all of them. And as you can see, in this project, the communication had to be done in a written form. Therefore, they were highly motivated because they were able to read, write in a foreign language, and the students from Brazil were able to understand. And true communication was taking place, and Ana Maria and myself, we have decided that we didn't want to correct our students' English. We just wanted communication to take place. We wanted them to communicate with each other, to share anything they wanted, except politics and except religion. So this was quite, quite successful, but we did have some problems. And our, our role was really important, because sometimes some of our students traveled, so the communication couldn't take place. Students get sick as well. So what we did is we followed every single group after school and we checked and we sent some messages to those groups that were falling behind. And here it is, 
we formed pairs, and we also formed trios. Before we started the project, what we wanted our students to know is how were they going to be evaluated. And we created these rubrics for participation. And this has helped them a lot to understand what was the purpose of the whole project. We sent them the criteria and then obviously the grading system that we were going to use. Because we, we thought that engagement had to be really important. They had to use appropriate language, but once again, we're not really focusing on accuracy, but in the use of language itself. What was really important was the number of exchanges, and we did have problems with this because sometimes only one or two students wrote a very long message, and there was not a real communication taking place. And then all the information collected. Now, this was important because we, we realized that suddenly, without our we as teachers been participating in this project as an outsider, we realized that students started to share their daily lives with the rest of the participants. So what we did is we started off creating videos. Argentina created a video in Animoto. Ana Maria, she also created another video. <coughs> yes, um, we also used PhotoPeach and students introduced themselves. So this was really the first contact they had through these videos. I want to highlight that this video uh, took place in, with teenagers, so they were quite shy in the moment, especially when we wanted to show the videos. Now we as teachers analyzed the whole project and we did have to go through some tensions. They at first they didn't know how to start and what to say. Imagine you just pairing up students from different countries and most of them, especially the boys, didn't know uh, how to start the conversation. So yes, there we did guide them on how they could start the conversation. As I told you before, we used Edmodo as our main platform, but students wanted to use WhatsApp or Facebook, and we told them that as we already had a rubric, that they were going to be evaluated on the interaction that took place in the Edmodo um, platform. There were silent partners, and we had we teachers it was our role to follow them and guide them throughout the course. <coughs> Sorry, I have a terrible cold today. And then uh, some of them went on holiday, but this was interesting because we had a case where they went on holidays and they even kept uh, in touch and this person kept sharing their, uh, his holiday with this girl from Argentina. And in Latin American countries we have unfortunate connectivity problems. Therefore, uh, some of them, when they wanted to write to their partner, they couldn't because they faced connectivity problems. But later on, we realized that they were able to solve this and then went to talk to partners. Again, as teenagers, this was difficult. But if we have to analyze the whole, the whole uh, project itself, it was highly successful. Because once they were able to pass this tension of, of what to say, communication took place naturally. As it was the World Cup, I don't know if you remember um, the World Cup, there was a terrible match where Brazil lost and uh, lost with many goals and uh, we were really afraid of what was going to happen. And we realized that our students were more mature than what we thought. They started to talk about politics in a very mature way with the rest of the students. And as you can see here they say Yesterday it rained, I was so happy. I think my holidays didn't change for the World Cup. I've never been very interested in the World Cup. I like more the Olympic Games, though I enjoy watching the World Cup. What do you expect from the World Cup? Do you like the fact that they are going to be held in Brazil? So these were some of the issues that we really didn't want them to talk about, but they talked about this naturally. And they started to talk about the government, on how to build the stadiums, the problems they faced. And then we realized that after this terrible match, our students wanted to meet each other. So we created a webinar where our students met each other. This took place on a Sunday morning. So imagine for teenagers, this is, you know, they really have to be motivated if they wanted to participate. At the beginning, they were extremely shy. We were all 
online. Nobody was talking except Ana Maria and myself until one girl had a brilliant idea to bring her pet and they all started to talk about their pets. So as you can see, this was not something that we had planned throughout our project, but this was highly motivating for them to know more about their friends in Brazil and in Argentina. When it was time to say goodbye, this was difficult for them. They didn't want the project to finish. What they really wanted was to continue the project, so we did extend it for two more weeks for them to continue writing and therefore to elaborate better reports. Now, where do we put, post all these reports that were written in English? And what we did is we had a wiki. In this wiki, you will find all the information on this project and how we carried it out. Our students, instead of obviously having a copybook, we just had this wiki with all the information. And our students had to upload their reports directly here. In the final reports, we did draft them and we did correct some of them. We gave suggestions to our students before they posted them to make all these reports available to the rest of the students. Here is an example of one of, of the reports. This is a student from Argentina that he, he wrote about um, his experience after communicating with Carolina. She was from Brazil for more than six weeks. What we really liked especially about some of the groups is that they started to share their daily lives. Their impressions were very positive. Um, and, uh, what they realized was that the technology was just a means that they used to communicate and to now have a friend in a different part of the world. And I would like to read only uh, one of their impressions. Imagine we had more than 50 students, so we, we read a lot and we analyzed most of the project. And here it says, uh, concluding this work, I'm going to say, that I really enjoyed this project. Really, I had a great time talking and writing with Anna. I wish we can repeat something like this. Can repeat something like this project again. Obviously, there are some mistakes. Also, I was very well organized. It was very well organized by the teachers. Well done. Let me know if the school is doing something like this in the future because I definitely want to participate again. And then another student wrote, to wrap up, I learned lots of things from this project, such as how life is for people of my age in different parts of the world. Again, you can see their mistakes, and we're not focusing on the mistake, but on the communication itself. And they really like this idea of sharing their lives with different students. So if we have to think back about this project and what we learned is that that day in class, when after the six weeks were over and we told our students that they had to write about uh, the pair, the person they had been communicating for more than six weeks, that essay was one of the best essays they wrote because they really knew the topic. They knew about the person. And obviously, if they didn't communicate for a long time, this would have never taken place. And uh, we can say that throughout this project, what happened was that there was collaboration, there was communication, and one of the most important things was that there was knowledge construction, and the knowledge construction was done by the students, not by the teacher. They had to gather information in order to write this essay at the end of the six weeks. So uh, this was, this project was selected by Microsoft as an innovative uh, project and uh, we were very lucky because we have been uh, both of us selected by Microsoft as innovative teachers after we finished uh, with the project and we shared it. Uh, you can check some of the references that we use with this um, project. Everything is in the wiki so you can check it out as well. And uh, these are our contacts. This is Ana Maria. She has a blog. You can contact her through uh, by um, Twitter or her email address, and well, I'm not I'm not very active with my blog anymore. I have no more time, but I also have a Twitter account, and you can contact me 
uh, via email. So let me would like to know if you have any kind of questions. Let me go to the chat wing. No, Are you no, no questions there, just uh, comments. But uh, you could, why don't you put your, as long as you're sharing your screen, why don't you put the link to your, why don't you put your blog on the, in the browser? Not the blog, sorry, the, the uh, project hello there, pvworks.com. And we could have a look at it. Maybe you could show it to us if you want. Just you could page oh, through it. I put that link in the chat wing, and it's also to. at learningtogether.pvworks.com. And it will be at learningtogether.net when this is. Isn't that okay? Getting it from Google. So we can yeah. Google Project Hello oh, there, and I'm Maria Menezes. Yeah, I didn't write down her name. Wait, let's see. See that my connectivity is very slow today. I'm going to check this out live. Okay. So that gets us. And when, when you want it to appear, it doesn't appear. Um, it's uh, project hello there, one word, dot pbworks.com. Okay. So I'll put that in the browser window. If you can. Can I go here? Yeah, just yeah, project hello there. .pbworks.com. I don't think www will get it though because it's oh. uh, yeah because it's um, the project hello there takes the place of www. Okay. Uh, let's see. That should work. Yeah. There we go. Project hello there. .pbworks.com. We 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 did this project like two years ago, so there it is. This is the wiki that we uh -huh. created. Can you see uh -huh. it? Yes, we can. Uh -huh. yeah. What links were you showing us? Can you pop around? Let me, and, let me just yeah, add this one to the, to the chat wing. Oh, I, I put it there. Oh, okay. Perfect. There. I, I can paste it there again. Okay. So the, um, yeah. this was the, the introduction of our students in, on the wiki's main page. Yeah, see? basically so we got it. We had a deadline, as you can see, the project took place to me two years ago. Here you are. Mm -hmm. These are the videos created by our students. Okay. And well, here we are, the, the teachers, both of us. And then mm -hmm. if you go to your <coughs> right, you can check directly the reports written by each of the students. Uh -huh. So these were the reports written just get one, the first one, just to show you. And obviously, they had to write about. Okay, Justine, this is one of you, one of my students. So, mm -hmm. see, they they shared pictures as well. It's really indirectly what we do with the web heads. We keep learning. Like I was able to implement this project thanks to the web heads because I met Ana Maria. And we start connecting online. We met several projects online as well. So we wanted also our students to go through a similar experience. Well, sorry, looks, looks like Maria Colosa has just joined us from uh, Rosario, I believe. No, Rosario? She's not in Rosario. No, it's, she's in uh, Cordoba. Maybe she can tell us. Cordoba, yeah. Yes, so here it is. Well. As I told you, that's why I'm not, I don't have my webcam on, but the, my connectivity today is so slow. My students created some mixed books on Argentina because for them to talk about their the different countries. And well, these are the ones, the reports created by my students. Yes, here it is. So she had to talk about Pedro, and well, she wrote about all her experience. Okay. They did this in a Word document, and then they shared this, um, and they added and posted it to the to the wiki that we created. But what was really nice throughout the project was this idea that they wanted more. They wanted to continue. And as a language teacher, I always say, I don't know if they're going to really remember what they learned about grammar, but I'm sure they will never forget this project. So they will remember that they participated in this project. Um, I was able to travel to to Microsoft to 
Microsoft headquarters to share this project with different teachers from all around the world. And obviously, I brought back some goodies for my students, so <laughs> they were really thrilled about that. So imagine that uh, my students being, um, you know, their work has been selected, and this idea not only been selected, but been selected internationally really made all their learning very meaningful, so they found this very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when, uh, I think, did we meet in Fukuoka? Was that the first time we met? Yeah, that was the first time we met, exactly. Uh, I was there, uh, well, Nelba and I presented yeah. on, what was it called, uh, Writing Matrix. And mm -hmm. at, at the time, that was um, a project where, let's see, I believe it was, uh, Dolores Molero in Venezuela and Nelba in Argentina and Rita uh, Zeinsteyer in Rosario exactly. and um, Sasha Sirk in Slovenia and at some point Carla Arena joined us and um, some other people from Casa Thomas Jefferson and the, what it was was the students were all they were they were introduced to blogging and they were very slow on the uptake but once they got into blogging they and started c c connecting with each other they really liked it but the we at the time we had a tool that where we could have the students all use the tag writing matrix back in the early days of tags that, that actually worked um, it was a tag that no one else was using mm -hmm. and technorati would actually find these students blogs uh, from in these different countries the Technorati since then has gone totally commercial and corporate and uh, isn't interested in blogs of students that you know aren't really helping their bottom line. But at the time, it, it was really a, a, a nice tool. And uh, so we were able to connect students around the world through their blog posts. And that's how Carla and the, and the, and the people at Thomas, uh, Casa Thomas Jefferson joined us, yeah. was that they just started tagging, using that tag, and then their blogs became uh, visible to the students from Argentina and Venezuela and Slovenia and vice versa. So um, it was a really nice project, very similar to, uh, you know, in scope, in that there was, wasn't, uh, it didn't focus at all on grammar, just, um, um, you know, on communication, and the and the students had similar, very similar results from what you have found, and that they they just really liked it. It was something they could remember, and they also carried on with each other. Um, you know, after the after the project ended, so that was what really amazed people was that they their, uh, the, the things that they kept writing to each other. And Maria has just told us in the chat she's from Santo Tome. Maria, you you're welcome to uh, put on a webcam if you want and say hi. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> we sort yeah, of turn them off for yeah, yeah, we found out. No, I know. Hi. Hello, such all time. Congratulations to her on this amazing Thank project. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm thrilled that you you are uh, presenting on this. Because uh, you know um, I'm now part of the advisor board in, for, with Lucy in the Global Education Conference and she asked me to look for um, instances of global collaboration and it's really hard for me to find uh, projects like this in South America. So my interest today being here is to ask you please um, share a little bit um, how you started all this because maybe there are teachers out there who want to do this but they, they just don't dare and, and what's valuable is uh, of sharing this experience is probably to tell them that it is possible that regardless of the students mistakes what we're interested here is isn't um, regaining their, their love for communication so I'd like to know how, how you how all this started so that okay. hopefully other teachers can get on board. Interesting question. Well it did start many years ago really when I became a webhead thanks to Vance and I met this vibrant community. 
And since then, I became a lifelong learner, as all of us were here. And we keep connecting with each other, learning from each other, learning from mistakes, because I think this is extremely important nowadays. But what I realized as a teacher is that Ana Maria just posted something on Facebook saying that she wanted to start an international project. And we felt that we were not, we were teaching our students just to sit for an exam. And that was not what we wanted. We wanted our students to learn English in a real environment. And uh, well, as I read this post on Facebook, that's how we got engaged. We started to brainstorm. Obviously, we had been trained by Webheads, and we took several of the courses. Um, and this has helped a lot, because we don't have this available. You know this in Argentina. We don't have many of these opportunities. And uh, if I have to wrap up like the whole experience, again, uh, they won't remember what they learned as regards English throughout the year, but they will definitely remember this project. Because it was, it was meaningful, not only meaningful, that they spoke about their daily lives as teenagers in two different countries that are quite similar, but they're very difficult, very different at the same time. So what I really love about the whole project was that when most of them told me, thank you, miss, now I have a friend in Argentina or I have a friend in Brazil. And this is really what happens with all the Webheads community. If teachers are looking into this idea of um, starting projects, obviously, well, first of all, uh, join Webheads, learn about different Webheads, but you also have an organization that it's called um, iEARN that they offer, I just wrote it down here in, in the chat, where uh, you can join teachers from all around the world. This is really how I also started many years ago, and I realized this idea of uh, teaching through projects was more meaningful than teaching just for them to sit for exams. Yeah, and uh, Maria is also uh, active in Hello Little World, which is something similar, isn't it? Or is it just for teachers, or does it involve students? Yeah, I, I think that uh, um, Jennifer now pointed out something really, really important. And it's the importance of not being alone here. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm not um, far from the truth if I say that you you have a bond with, with your partner in Brazil, with your teacher in Brazil. There is this trust uh, that you are both on the same boat and, and we need that. Vance has given me this and, and Elizabeth too who is also here with the many EBO sessions I've been to. Uh, and you can't possibly do this alone. I earned, I heard about that. It, the conference was last year. And, and my other community, um, Hello Little World, is, is something uh, we all go, we all go, the ones in the community, we support each other uh, so many times. Um, and it's such a, a great place. Um, it's a place where you get energy from to do things, ideas, um, and that's why it, I think it's very important that you can share this today. Um, really glad to know about that. Also something that we have to bear in mind, there's a lot of resistance. I don't know, I imagine that we all have to go through this. But it was not easy to go with this project to the school heads and tell them, we're going to go public, we're going to publish everything online. That's the first resistance that we have to, you know, go through, unfortunately. Because we wanted everybody to learn about our own experience as well. So this was not very easy. We had to um, write down uh, several um, objectives based on the project, how we wanted to implement it, what was the main purpose of the project itself. And uh, well, we were very lucky that it had been selected. Therefore, uh, the school was also very happy. But I believe that when we want to innovate, we have to go through many barriers that maybe we planned the project itself. And there were there are hidden things before we started implementing the project. As and as you say, we have to do this in groups. We can't do this alone. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of resistance in implementing innovation and change in education. Unfortunately, and I think that everybody here knows very well what I'm talking about because you are all role models in your own communities. And this is what you have been doing for ages. 
I, I would like to say um, that there, there are two things which stand out for me. Uh, one was that your project was so clearly defined. That that's you know that is really great. The students were very clear about what they had to do. Um, I did a project with a, a physics class in in Russia at. Um, but it started at the end of the year, just with a, a whip of enthusiasm from the teacher I'd met at a conference, and uh, it was it was extremely enjoyable. But we just shared uh, what we were doing in class. In fact, there was no really constructed um, project. And um, the other thing, also, because I'm always the grumpy member of these groups, you know. And um, the other thing is, I, I, I know that Thomas Jefferson ha um, has a paid edition of the PB Works. And all of this work, which um, I, I was always amazed at how PB Works allowed you to make an, in, an indefinite number of wikis and kept them forever uh, for a very, very long time. And then, unfortunately, in the last two or three years, they've suddenly. Um, sort of started getting wise and uh, so now they although they send you an, uh, an, a warning that they're going to close a wiki if it's a very old one and you've changed emails addresses you don't see them you know so they it's disappear wrong. and mm -hmm. I'm suffering from disappearing wikis in fact uh, through my own fault of course. <laughs> Me too. But, uh, I, I have a habit a I go I log on to uh, I log on to PB works and Check, you know, and, and you can you can organize. I think your list of wikis by uh, date. The, the, how yes. old is the last time you looked? And you need to go and uh, I even composed a little note. I just it's a little statement that I just add to the bottom of the wiki. I check this wiki on you know, this date. You know? uh -huh. um, yeah. So that yeah. so that activity keeps it alive. Just something there that uh, yeah. alters it slightly. Yeah, but I had. Well over 600 on three different email addresses. Because the first time I thought, ah, oh, you know, goodness me, I can't carry on with this. So I, and then in any case, I changed my email address. So I actually have three different email addresses in this deal. You see, this is uh, <laughs> this is what I uh, anyway. I haven't. I've, I I know that they will cancel wikis if they're if you haven't seen them for a year or so. They they do send you a notice. They um, send you a notice. But, uh, Yes, if, if you get it, like like you say, but I don't think they've. I, I've started wikis recently. They haven't charged or anything like that, or they haven't no. mentioned it was. In the so Absolutely, it seems to work as it used to. Mm, yep, except that yep. they just get rid of wikis if, uh, if you just hang on to them. Well, it works as it used to for people who are already enrolled. Whereas if you read the present. Um, you know, people enrolling now, they're told that they can only have something like three or five wikis. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it's, it's people who abuse it with 600 wikis, you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't the owner of all of them. I was, the, I was a member <laughs> of my student. <laughs> my own. How many people do you know that they have 600 wikis? <laughs> Well, that's over the years, you see. There were about a hundred a year, but the students created their own mainly, and then the ones I sometimes created for them if they were having difficulty. But uh, yeah, you know. Anyway, <laughs> just, just mentioned to Jen, uh, your your camera isn't showing. We're, we're seeing a screen share of the Hangout, so it's been that way for some time. Maybe there's something else you can do because usually you can get it working. So let me see. Just to let you know. Yep. There, well, there's a, there's your face. That's that's good. Okay. There you there go. You. We've got it. <laughs> I started to realize it was off. <laughs> Here I yeah. am. No, yeah, I really yeah, that's great. what we realized from the project that was really important was for our students to have the rubrics before they started the project. That was really a very wise decision because they knew how they were going to be evaluated before the project itself started. That's why they were worried when somebody went on holidays or somebody had connectivity problems because they knew way in advance how they were going to be evaluated. So I think that was very important. But we did have fun. I think that one of the most important things when you, you plan these kind of projects is that the teacher has to be more motivated than the students. <laughs> I think that's yeah. very, very important. We really had fun planning all this with Ana Maria, 
we worked a lot. We worked after hours. We connected all the time. And uh, we really wanted to be a nice learning experience for our students. And that was definitely what happened. Maybe, yeah, maybe Michael. Yeah. I was, I was going to say maybe Michael could tell us a little bit about Webheads in 1998, because we did something similar. That's how we got started. It was uh, with the old Webheads, uh, this, the, we called it Writing for Webheads. And uh, we were all meeting in the palace and just. We we started out uh, with sort of um, how would you say um, um, we were supposed to be teaching classes and writing or grammar or whatever, but um, we actually the students were not at all interested in any kind of syllabus, and they just wanted to come online and talk, and that's how that's what really attracted so many people. After after a while, we started with just a small handful of students. Uh, then they sort of expanded to 12, and then we got someone to send us a picture, and someone else did, and then all of a sudden we got flooded with pictures, and we put those on the on our website, and st people just started interacting with each other, and they started coming online and talking to each other because we, we were getting voice tools at the time. And, um, then they started meeting us at conferences. We take we sort of took our show on the road, and. Um, that's what happened. That's how Webheads in Action got started because in 2002, well, actually, a lot of teachers started getting attracted to that as well. And um, so that's how Webheads in Action got started, the teacher side of it in 2002. And Michael. I was thinking of that, Vance, mm -hmm. when um, Jen was talking about worrying about, you know, are they using correct grammar? Are they remembering anything that they're learning? And we had that same experience. I mean, Vance and I were trying to run classes, and we dutifully did that for months. But it became obvious that what the students wanted to do was just get together and talk. And once we removed the whole construct of class and specific things they had to learn and just became a very free-form arrangement, then it took off. So I'm not surprised, Jen, that you were were worried about the same things. But I guess that was a time when I learned it's actually more important to set up a situation where people are just allowed to communicate about whatever they're interested in and then you get the engagement. Exactly. Yeah, that's what that's what they when they learn, that's what they remember, <laughs> the learning that carries over with them and uh, I think we, we should all uh, change our subjects and start calling this English for instructional communication and that was all because I remember this teacher who says oh I, I have to teach the present perfect in the second year because the teachers from the third year what would he think about me if the students don't know the present perfect but the, the student doesn't care about the present perfect uh, but the they, students they are probably to. using the present perfect anyway. If you set up a situation <laughs> exactly. like this, they will actually use it. And then you can work backwards. And if you want to do that, go through their conversations and then highlight examples of the use of the present perfect. So exactly. I think that's a much more effective way of doing it. So I think that it's also what Jennifer says, that it's not until the teachers um, experience this that they, they get the enthusiasm to do something like this, to risk something like this, to stand up in front of the headmistry and say, hey, I have this project, and it's amazing. <laughs> um, but well, the they're, whole, they're, I mean, it fits with the whole dogme um, concept you know, of working with the emergent language. Yeah, well, this year, this year we, we started a project where my students are teaching Spanish, to children in China, and China they're teaching Mandarin to my students here in Argentina. So that's interesting because now we're talking about different kinds of languages where they're teaching each other. So by the end of the year, I will be able to analyze this other project. But as a teacher, what's interesting is that I'm learning Mandarin myself because I keep listening to these videos being recorded by students in, in China. So this is really interesting because they they want to know the basics. My students want to know the basics of Mandarin, and these students in, in China want to know the basics of how to speak the basic, a really basic level of Spanish. So the teacher here 
really in both cases, are the students, not the teachers. We're just facilitators. We're just monitoring the whole experience. Uh, it aligns with this all, all discussion that's going on about uh, English as a lingua franca and, and the multilingual francas that are spreading uh, by using so many, or oh, by trying to communicate, or by the world trying to communicate, and English being there. <laughs> exactly. And, but it's fascinating. Jen, I wanted to ask when you were showing snippets of the student reports there was just a little glimpse of a paragraph where someone was writing about the fact that they found out that they had very different interests in music they both liked music but their the kinds of music they listened to was quite different so i was thinking maybe you've done this it would be really interesting to kind of take it to another level and summarize all the different things that the students talked about and produce a snapshot of what teenagers in Argentina and Brazil are interested in. Yeah. Did you do that or nice. think about that? Great idea. Never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they thought that they were we were very similar. We are quite similar. But on the other hand, they were they really realized how different we are, <laughs> even though we know it's a neighboring country, and uh, that was so interesting. So they really learned this. They Learn more than English. Obviously, education, how to contact people, how to start a conversation. You know that was very difficult for a teenager. How to start a conversation? Maybe we take that for granted. But that was the most difficult part. How to? You know, maybe we just pair them up with a girl. Said, Miss, how do I start this conversation with a girl from Brazil? What do I talk about? Okay. <laughs> it was not that simple at the beginning. But what we what we really liked. That it was all in a written form. It was not or you know they didn't really use spoken English, so they really had to put their grammar into practice. It had to be clear for the other person in the other part of the world to understand what they were writing about. What we realized were that my students had a higher level. So one moment of the project, the students from Brazil, you know, they kept being a little bit shy, saying, "But wait, wait we don't have their same English level." So there, that was the only moment where we as teachers intervened and we said, we're not evaluating your English level once again. We just wanted to communicate and to learn from each other. So that, that was the only moment where we had to intervene. But thank you, Michael, for that uh, suggestion. I will definitely take that into account. Another thing, from what something Maria said, she asked you if uh, there was uh, how how this can be perpetuated, you know, how how can teachers who want to connect their students, how can they uh, participate in something like this? And I'm just wondering if your Edmodo community or your Edmodo site, is that something that you're keeping going as a community project or did you, is it just a one-off now it's not there anymore? No, it's still on. It's still, you can access it. You can invite uh -huh. you to, to enter the, the group. The thing is, these were all the conversations that took place, uh, the, the conversations our students had in the model. So uh -huh. the only ones that really had access to this were Ana Maria and myself, nobody else. And uh, mm -hmm. they also respected the groups because that's important. Don't forget that we're talking about teenagers. They were very respectful because they liked the project. They got hooked. And I think that was Elizabeth said as well. It was very clear what they had to do. Okay. And if they were respectful, they could take their learning as far as they wanted. So that all how oh, nice. I, that. I brought my oh, pen. Another way. participant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and once again, as I, as I said before, we really had fun creating this project, and uh, you you know students also realize that you know when you come for something. So innovative, something so different from traditional teaching. Students are also expecting that. They want to get away from traditional teaching a little bit and explore different things. And don't forget that all this took place after school. So I had there was no internet. Okay, they could we didn't this didn't take place in a classroom setting. It just took place online after school. So and the results were amazing. So I always love to say this. We don't need to have all the technology. <laughs> to innovate. We just have to have a good idea and start implementing it directly. 
Now, breaking away from traditional teaching, that's that's actually what we've been talking about, uh, is how, you know, uh, it, well, as uh, Ken Robinson, Sir Ken Robinson often says, you know, that, that the schools are killing education, you know. So, um, uh, well, we're talking about wouldn't it be nice if we could just, you know, get people to communicate and that would be the curriculum. And another thing that you're interested in that I'm very interested in lately is Minecraft, which uh -huh. you, you mentioned that you you were you asked me uh, about it because you need to sell it to uh, or convince people in that traditional uh, zeitgeist, you know, uh, that this would be beneficial, but it's so hard to do. You know, so um, I'm just curious about what your interest is and what you uh, how how you think you would raise interest in it and um, well you know it all it all happened last year when I went to Microsoft headquarters and I saw a teacher from Brazil using Minecraft in the classroom and I said wow what's this like was you know remember Second Life we started exploring Second Life well we are all <laughs> ex Second Life explorers here. So I found that to be fascinating. He was teaching at the moment German. Um, it was uh, German history, very difficult. So he used Minecraft for the students to build, uh, to recreate this historical uh, epoch through Minecraft. And last year I was teaching in another school. I remember one of my students telling me that he was struggling with history. And I remember listening about this project and I told a student of mine, um, do you play Minecraft? Yes, I do. And why don't you build this in Minecraft? Just to make a long story short, <laughs> this student, not only did he build um, this uh, history uh, project with more than seven different students of not only the school, but students from other schools. So that was wonderful. He created a WhatsApp group where he gathered the best Minecrafters <laughs> that he knew and they started to build history, all the, to recreate all historical epochs through Minecraft. So that's how I got interested because as a teacher I never used it before but I saw the great interest that this generated with everybody at school. This year I started to use, because uh, I'm teaching English and a little bit of technology, um, let me reconnect I'm using Kodu. I don't know if you've ever heard about this before. Kahoot? Kodu. It's called Kodu. Um, I'm not I'm sharing sorry. my screen anymore. Let me just write it down in the chat. Yeah. And I started this year. We just uh, it's, it's been only one month. <coughs> and I, as a teacher, I know my students love using games, and you know, and they use a lot of games. But I thought that it was high time to teach them how to create games. So. Um, it's, it's called like this. It's it's so uh, wait. My computer is so slow. There we are. It's called um, Kodu. There, see, it's taking so long to write. There, I shared it. What is this? This is really programming. Students that play with the Xbox or with oh, the PlayStation, cool. they can create their own games. And this is mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. It's not Minecraft itself, but it's similar to Minecraft. So the impact this first week at school was, wow, maybe we're using Minecraft. And they, they had to build their own games. They had to build their own terrain. And the results were absolutely amazing throughout the whole school community. So therefore, I started to, so I'm talking with the school head saying, we have to bring Minecraft. Look at the impact Kodu has made in our school community. So imagine if we can start using um, Minecraft as an educational platform. So um, what I heard about is that there aren't many examples of how to use Minecraft in an educational setting. Everything you read on Minecraft is positive, but there aren't really so many examples of the impact that Minecraft generates in students after they've been working with it for a while. But Vance just gave me <laughs> a wonderful tip. So now I have several things to share. Um, I believe, and I know this is this is true, is that many of my students are going to know a lot more than myself if we implement Minecraft. And this is something important, and I would like to stress this out, 
is that I love learning from my students and I think it's perfect to give students this role where they are teaching me how to use a tool that didn't exist in my time. So that's important. Um, we are maybe planning to start implementing it, it this year, but we would like to implement it in school curriculum. And that's what's, diffi that's what's difficult because, you know, it's not that easy. You don't have many schools that are implementing it in the school curriculum. Yes, after school. But, uh, well, maybe we're lucky. Here in Australia, people, or people in government, like education bureaucrats, are now talking about code literacy. And I just had a look at CODU, and obviously that's part of what it would do. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a groundswell of opinion now that what should be taught in schools is code so that students have the, the tools to create the sorts of things that we're looking at right now. I mean, what we're doing is riding on the backs of people who created the code to make this kind of communication possible. So code is kind of the key to 21st century communication. So it's in in Australia, I was really surprised. It's quite recent in the last six months, but there is now talk at higher levels of bureaucracy in education about introducing code in schools. Well, mm -hmm. I, had I an started last year, Michael, and the results are amazing. Really had to study a lot because this is obviously, I'm a language teacher, so imagine suddenly I'm teaching coding, but it's amazing because if you want to start with coding, I highly suggest you to start with, um, there's a big movement in the US, I don't know if you ever heard about it, it's called, um, it's called Hour of Code. Heard Hour about of it. Code, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, here, it's like the basics, uh, because in the US, uh, Obama said that he needed more students to learn this. It's like, I always say this is the new ABC. Instead of teaching only the alphabet, we have to start teaching our students how to code. Because wherever, you know, nowadays it's so important. It's a different language. What I realized from my experience implementing this is from last year is that boys are more into this than girls. <laughs> and I still, have, I still have to analyze more about that. Last weekend I was in a conference here in Argentina where they were asking, please, more women to get involved in coding. Because coding is everywhere nowadays. Any app that you have has codes, any computer, any program you use obviously is coding. Uh, what systems engineers were saying is that they have to create groups and in these groups it's very important to have the women's point of view. Ah, that's a good one for women. And they don't have enough women that are good coders. Because it's true, women see things differently than men. And especially when we're talking about this idea of using coding. But um, Michael, I have many more links to share if you want later on. Because last year when I was in Microsoft, I was speaking to a teacher in the US that she had been teaching coding for the last five years. And they're wonderful, wonderful games that you can use with your students. Even I, didn't, I, I don't get this, um, you know, you have to learn coding. Um, I mean, what, what language are you talking about? You know? Um, there's so many different program. ways of coding. Uh, it's a program. Sorry. It's just a program. What you do is, uh, for example, in kindergarten, uh, we start with the very basics of the students to understand that uh, if you want the mouse to move, you have to give instructions. Turn to the right, turn to the left, move forward. Very basic instructions. Okay, that's how we start for them to understand that when you are working with a computer, the computer just follows orders. And these orders means programs, okay, and coding. So that's how we start in a very basic level. But nowadays, you have so many different programs that you can start implementing. I had a very interesting experience um, this uh, this uh, um, the last month with my children in Bristol, my grandchildren in Bristol. Um, the university computer department had a a day organized for the children, and so on a on a ra on a Raspberry Pi computer connected to a Minecraft app, they built from the Python code the, the, a wall which then they hit with a, a, a thing. And I didn't really get the point because the resulting game, I mean my, my grandson immediately saw how you, you 
you know, it didn't really, you, it, he immediately saw the way round to get, um, because obviously it can't be complete, you can't do a, a really, um, and uh, it seemed, uh, you know, rather a lot, of, I mean, I have used computer programming since the punch card days, and it seemed a bit, um, uh, uh, you know, why, um, yes, it's, it's good to know that the computer obeys orders, but no individual can, you know, can code anything which is really valid when it when it's finished. You know, now the state at which it's arrived, you need a team. Excellent. You know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well, here, for example, with Kodu, what we're doing, they're building games in teams. And as a teacher, what I want to analyze, and now comes my English together with coding, is then I wanted them to write about their game and describe their game and then teach this game to other boys and girls. So there's where I'm putting the language together with coding and everything together. It's a small experiment. Let's see how it works. But up till now, the results are amazing, especially the boys. Once again, the girls, at the beginning, it was very difficult for them to understand. The thing is, if you want to implement something like Kodu, you have to have a joystick. And we don't have joysticks at school, <laughs> so that makes it a little bit difficult. But it's amazing how simple it is to start coding with a program like Kodu. And it's free. You just need to download it and use it. And then later on, we can invite parents, grandparents, everybody to come and play the games that my own students created. Um, last week, I was playing a game created by one of my students, and I said, this is wonderful. It's absolutely amazing to see that they're not playing games, but they're building their own games, and they can share these games with other people. So there's a lot of algorithm also going on. So imagine that Kodu is as from fifth grade onwards. You know, you can't, it's quite complicated. It gets quite complicated. There's a lot of shooting also in Kodu, so these are the things that we don't accept at school. So they can't shoot. That's what some of the things that boys don't like, because <laughs> they're creating a game and nobody's shooting. <laughs> but well. Obviously, we're, we're implementing this in an educational setting. What's also important is that we're not only teaching the students, but we're also teaching the parents. You have no idea how many parents. How many parents are you know, sending emails asking, what's this? What can I do with this? And uh, some parents just got hooked with this idea as well. So uh, they spend the weekend maybe creating a Kodu game instead of playing a game with the PlayStation. So, well, it's all a, a, a nice learning journey that I'm going through, so I, I, fi I find it fascinating. Yeah, make, making people more active rather than passive consumers of the things available is good. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to say something about what we're doing in Minecraft. There's this one guy there, his name is Mircea Petrascu, and he's from Romania. He teaches math. He also teaches kids coding. I think he brings them into his house and he does... Uh, let, uh, things for them. Uh, he te teaches them, you know, uh, outside the school context. But he's a math teacher at school. He's very into Minecraft. He's showed us books. He has shown us books that uh, uh, online books that explain how you can do interesting things with code in Minecraft. And he has this to his server, and he puts these codes into subroutines, which we can type into the text chat window and make things happen. For example, you could set up a house. You, you know, you, you start with a square. It's kind of like Second Life in a way, building in Second Life. It's the same sort of concept, but the codes will actually uh, specify the where to put the blocks in relation to your starting point, and then you can just kind of enter a subroutine. A house goes up, you know, which is very useful in Minecraft because you need it to survive the night, but, but he builds cities, or you can go over to uh, some terrain, and you can tunnel into it. He builds codes that tunnel, so that's very uh, interesting, okay, too. Okay. Uh, yeah, so in, anyhow, uh, he's really opened our eyes, especially, uh, I mean, that could be part of a, an English course as well, you know, teaching kids how to code and how to, because actually it, it's known that kids will get books in English. I've got a couple here. Uh, these, there's somebody oh, who is... I have the same, you know, man. I've, I've got the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one exists in Turkish. This is the start, the starting one. You can get it in Turkish, and so there's a teacher who's Not in Turkey. One. I've got the green one. Yeah, the green, the green one. This is the basic, isn't it? This is the advanced. Yeah. yeah. So this one, 
was not translated into, or maybe it's the other, yeah, maybe you're right. Let's see, this is the combat. Yeah, the red one is combat. That's the, the green one was available. This yeah. is uh, beginner's, beginner's handbook, yeah. So uh, the red one was not available in Turkish, but he bought one for his kid, and the kid took it to school. The next thing you know, all the other kids had to have it. And the next thing you know, they're all reading it in English, you know, which is uh, that's what kids want to read. So if you put, if you have an online resource that explains to kids how to use code to throw up things in Minecraft and make them master builders, and they can just build like that, you know, uh, they'll read that, you know. And yeah. as you say, teach each other how to use it, teach you how to use it. How did you do that? Well, this is what I did. Okay, write it down for me. So. Yeah, this is this is the world, you know, that uh, that we we it's right at our fingertips, you know. It's just getting it, putting it into motion, you know, and uh, uh, and and getting it past the people who are trying to constrain us to teaching what they think we should teach and what the kids don't really want to learn. Exactly, and the and and the classroom environment is totally different. Uh, pe students come in happy, they leave happy because they're doing something that they enjoy. And that's absolutely, yeah. I think, that that's what education has to be about. Students are saying, oh, yeah. no, I have another English class. No, it has to be, wow, I have another English class or coding class or science class or history class. And that's up to us teachers to try to move this and, and change this. It's not easy. <laughs> but, well, that's why we're all here on a Sunday <laughs> sharing our ideas and trying to become yeah. better teachers. And uh, I've been inspired for, from so many of you, so uh, Vice thank versa. You. Yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting watching Jen develop, you know, because I think when I was in Argentina, you were just kind of yes. at a, a period of doubt where you weren't really sure if yes. the direction you were going was going to be productive, but then you took off from there. So. And I, uh, I'm so thankful, Vance, for you for that, really. Because it's oh, as I say, it's always difficult to innovate and uh, to bring these, you know, these ideas. You have to have people in schools that trust you, people in the school that believe that what you're doing has a pedagogical purpose. And uh, well, things might work, maybe they won't. We will fail throughout the whole implementation stage, but uh, the outcome has to always be positive for everybody in the educational setting. So. Um, I'll let you know what happens when we invite parents and grandparents to play the kids' games. Let's see what happens and how they react to this. Because yeah, is come on and tell us about it. Come on Sunday and uh, and tell us what happens. Because <laughs> we've all recorded them. Sorry. 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 You should record that, please. <laughs> yes, yes, that will be great. But well, um, you know, I'm, we're we're innovating, and uh, well, as again, it's not easy. But well, with the help of all of you, it's always easier. So, um, well, well, we'll continue innovating, and I hopefully, I might implement Minecraft this year. Folks, I'm going to jump in and um, say I'm going to bed. I've got to get up early enough to do some work. So yeah. thanks, Jen. Yeah. This has been great. Really enjoyed it. And lovely to talk with you all. And Jen, thank you for looking after my friend Bruce. He really appreciated it. Oh, my pleasure. It. My pleasure. Such a nice person. Yes, he is. So thanks all. See you thank next you time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. Hi all. Good to be here again. <laughs> Miss you. <Okay. laughs> Good yeah. luck. Same here. Glad you could join us. Okay, and so mm -hmm. thank you very much for inviting me to be here. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to be together with different web heads from around the world. Yes, and for sure. Yeah, thanks a lot. Let's keep learning and sharing. Yeah, we really like to learn your what happens when you your results that you just spoke about the experiment that you're doing. That would be really something we'd really like to learn more about. So when you when you okay. feel inspired to come on and tell us about it, uh, please do. I would please. love to. No problem, yeah. Vance. My pleasure. After all the things you taught me, <laughs> that would be Vice definitely. Versa. Okay, wonderful. Well, Vance, okay. thank you very much. Thanks. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, see you soon, then.
Okay. Bye bye. I'll just okay. Bye bye. This has bye been. Bye. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to outro it. Okay, this okay, is uh, yes, Jen Bishur. Mm -hmm. She's uh, just leaving us, and she. Uh, this is the 20th of March, 2016, and we're on Learning Together. We do this every Sunday, and we really appreciate Jennifer and all the other people who came on to uh, talk to us. And this is being recorded. will be arch archived at learningtogether.net. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye. See you. Okay, bye-bye.